Hi, everyone. I just want to welcome everyone today. We're going to talk about taxes um, and COVID-19, and so that's going to have to do with um, our deadlines, checks, and for some, some scams already um, in the mix. So um, hello to everyone from the chamber. We're really excited to be part of this. We love being part of the chamber, and this is another uh, great way to help share uh, information as well as through these academy classes. So um, Ms. Amanda will help with any questions along the way, so please share those, and uh, we'll answer questions kind of at the end that probably would be easiest unless you see something, Amanda, that might be um, kind of better to do along the way. Awesome, we'll get started. All right, so big picture um, with our deadlines. Um, April 15th used to be my favorite day. It's not gonna be that way this year. Um, the IRS has extended all deadlines to July 15th. So that's going to be personal and business tax returns that would have been due April 15th. That includes estates and trusts, um, C-Corps, all of those things, um, and as well as payments. That's kind of the big picture of why they did the push they want to give people an extra 90 days to get those payments paid um, because the economy is um, kind of in a difficult situation right now. So you will have until July 15th to make any payments due to the federal government, and that will be without interest or penalties. South Carolina and North Carolina have both followed the same July 15th day deadline. Um, other states, you just have to check with their Department of Revenue to see um, whether they have followed along or not. Originally, South Carolina had only gone to June 1st, but they did extend to July 15th. I expect that most states probably will. Um, but do check on each uh, specific state if you have other states involved. Um, so again, no penalties or interest until July 15th. If you don't have your stuff together and can't get that return filed by July 15th, it's not a problem. You can still file an extension um, until July 15th, but that only gives you till October 15th. That used to be a six-month extension from April 15th to October, but now it just gives you still until October 15th. Um, and just a reminder, extensions do not give you an extension of time to pay. That is an extension of time to file information. So all of those payments uh, will be due July 15th. Anything beyond that will be subject to penalties and interest. Um, another good thing that it, since you do have more time to file, you also have more time to make IRA and HSA contributions for last year, um, for 2019, so that if, if that will help your tax liability to have those deductions, you still can do that through that July 15th deadline as well. All right. Next up, so let's talk about um, economic impact payments, otherwise known as stimulus checks. Everybody's asking about when are they going to get them, how much are they going to get. So for a single taxpayer, um, you can get up to $1,200, and that's going to start phasing out um, once your income, that's your AGI for a 2019 year tax return, that's line 8B. That's your adjusted gross income. So once you reach $75,000, that will start to phase out. It'll completely phase out at $99,000. For married filing joint returns, so you're married and filing together, um, $24,000 or $2,400 will be the stimulus check. Um, the phase out will begin at $150,000 and completely phase out at $198,000. Um, so what does that mean if you're in between? It's going to adjust. Um, $5 less per every $100 they make over the limits. And that's really confusing. So let me give you some examples of what that means. So for a single filer, if you make $80,000 on that AGI, you're going to get $950. $85,000, you'd get $700. $90,000, you would get $450. Uh, for married filing jointly, if you have, if you AGI is $160,000, you'd get $1,900. $170,000, you'd get $1,400. $190,000, you'd get $400. Now we also of course have head of household kind of in between. Um, so that phase out for head of household is gonna be 136.5. That's when it'll start to phase out. And then you'll completely phase out, oh, I'm sorry, it'll completely phase out at 136.5. So it, for AGI, head of household at 115, you get 1,075. 120,000, you get 825, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there is actually a really good calculator on what you'd get if you go to Forbes.com. That's been the uh, most helpful one I've found yet. So I love Forbes, great website, lots of good information. So you can use the calculator there. Um, for You'll also get $500 for each qualifying child. These are dependent children under 17. So basically, if they qualify for the child tax credit, you'd get an additional $500 for each child on the tax return. Um, so they, they, you do have to claim them. They can't be claimed by anyone else for you to get it. Um, something to keep in mind here, children 18 to 22 who may still be dependents, let's say they're still in high school or in college, but have aged out of that child tax credit, they don't get anything. They're not gonna get anything because they're claimed as dependents and you're not gonna get anything for them because they're over that 17 year old, thresh, 17 -year -old threshold. 
Um, in order to get any check, you do have to file a tax return to receive this payment. Um, it's first gonna be based on your 2019 tax return. If you've not filed your 2019 tax return, then they will look at the 2018 tax return. If you've not filed any of them, you're not gonna get any of them. So we're encouraging people to get uh, caught up on their tax payments as quickly as possible. Uh, we're open in both offices and are pretty steady still, even with all the craziness going on. Um, so again, you can't be claimed as a dependent, and that's gonna go for adults too. Um, we see some people, they'll wanna claim their uh, girlfriend or their parent, if the person is claimed as a dependent, they will not get any stimulus payment and you won't get anything for them if they're over 17. Um, one big change this week, um, on Monday, um, the IRS had submitted that people who are on Social Security and not required to otherwise file um, would have to file a simple tax return in order to get the payment. Um, there was a lot of pushback um, and people appealing to Congress to uh, prevent that because one, we don't want our seniors to be coming out right now, really. We don't want them exposing themselves to have to file a tax return to get the stimulus payment. Um, plus it's an undue worry burden for them. Um, so we don't, you know, they were able to change that. That was announced on um, April 2nd, um, at, wait, no, April 1st at night, very late at night, um, they will not have to file a tax return in order to do that. They will match up against the uh, roles of Social Security uh, after all of those have been um, submitted, because there are a lot of people on Social Security who do already file, so they'll double check against that. Anyone who has not already received a payment will then get theirs based on Social Security. Amanda, do we have any questions we wanna go ahead and address? I've seen the, the hands raise a couple of times. Yeah, we have a question um, asking if there's an update on the portal they were going to set up to change your direct deposit information. Ah, that's a great question. That's actually on our next slide. So we'll go right to that. All right. So how are you going to get your payment? So it'll be direct deposit or check, and that'll be the same as the last tax return filed. Um, so you'll want to make sure that your address and direct deposit is up to date. So if your direct deposit has changed, what do you do? They are, they say they're going to have a portal for people to update their direct deposit. Now, how long that will take? We don't know. Um, at this point, if they don't have an up-to-date uh, direct deposit for you, it typically will then revert to a check if it bounces, um, and then that would take more time. If Depending on when they can get this portal up and running, that would, of course, expedite that process. Did that answer the question? Okay. All right, let's see. Now, as far as when we're gonna see the first, um, we'll say checks. Um, Nuchin says two weeks for the first direct deposits. I, I, do, I think two to three weeks might be the case, but it will not be all done at once. It will be in, a, they release it just like they do social security checks and, and other things in the past. It'll be in stages. Um, he's saying in the next two weeks, that'll be, you know, we'll have to see on that. Um, the big issue is that checks could take much longer. Um, I've seen up to 20 weeks and that's a long time. So um, if you've not filed or if you have not updated that direct deposit information, I definitely um, would recommend doing that. Um, as far as changing your address, if you need to do that, there's a form 8822. Um, you would have to mail that in. It does take about four to six weeks for them to update that in their system. So if you do need to change your address from what was on the last filed tax return um, for 2019, then go ahead and do that now. If you haven't filed your tax return for 2019, do it now, because that automatically updates your address electronically um, and will save a lot of headache um, in the long run. And then if you have direct deposit, you can go ahead and include include that too, because that will um, expedite the process. Um, the big issue with um, Social Security recipients, as I mentioned, they're going to have to, if they don't file a tax return, um, they will have to match up those that have already received payments versus what's on the Social Security um, rolls. I, I anticipate that we're going to see those um, payments to Social Security recipients only it's going to take a while um, because that takes time to kind of go through all those lists. So I just want to give people a warning um, out there. Um, so if you are a Social Security only recipient, you're not required to file, you may want to file a simple tax return just to kind of expedite the process. Um, now I will say there are lots of people as well who are not on Social Security that may not be required to file. Um, that might be someone that only made a couple of thousand dollars, they don't have any kids, they didn't have much withheld. Um, really for a single person, the filing threshold is at $12,000, that's or 12200 this year. That's your standard deduction. So if you make less than that and you're not qualified for any credits, you may not have filed. Um, in order to get 
the stimulus payment you will need to file. So if you know anyone in that situation who didn't file or, or is behind on their taxes, if they want to be eligible for this, they need to file a tax return. Could be 18 or 19. Um, and whether they file 18 or 19 may depend on their total income. Remember those phase out thresholds, if their income is 18 is much less than 19, they may wanna hold off on filing their 19 return until they get these stimulus checks. All right, the other question I get a lot is, what about offsets? Um, there are some people who owe back taxes. They might owe um, student loans or other government entities. Um, they are not going to offset these stimulus checks um, according to the law as it's written, except for child support. That's the one thing that I have seen that they will offset these stimulus payments for, and that is for uh, child support. Um, so what if you didn't qualify in 18, you made too much money, maybe you made too much money in 19 too. What happens for 2020? That's a great question. So what this will then become is a refundable credit on our 2020 tax return. We have a lot of people who were making good money in 18 and 19, but this year is gonna be a different story. If you didn't get it based on 18 or 19 and your income changes significantly, that you would have been eligible for it in 2020, it won't help you now, but you will get it as a credit on your 2020 tax return. Another question I'm getting a lot is, well, am I going to have to repay this if my income is out of this threshold for 2020? As of right now, as the law is written, there is no repayment um, uh, method in the tax return, only a way to get it if you did not in 2020. All right, any good questions now, Amanda? Um, you may have answered this, but let's do it again. To yeah. clarify, if I owe tax this year, will they use last year's direct deposit info? Well, that's a good question. So if you owe taxes this year, no, they will use the last um, tax return filed. So they're not going to look at direct deposit from two years ago. So what they'll do is they'll issue that as a check. So I would definitely keep an eye out for that direct deposit portal so you can update your information. Do people pay taxes on the stimulus money? Oh, you guys are reading my mind. Let's go to the next slide. All right. So uh, with this, uh, taxable payments. I want to keep you guys um, up to date on this. So the stimulus check will not be a taxable event for you. So anything that you receive this year is yours to keep, no tax. Um, again, for those who didn't get, you may be eligible for it on next year's tax return. Now, things that will be taxable, we're all in a tough situation right now. So I want to make sure that we are thinking ahead when it comes to taxes. If you need to go on unemployment, take a retirement distribution to help pay the bills, if you pick up a side gig to bring in some extra money, um, if you cash in stocks, bonds, investments, or sell a car, or sell a house, or sell some land, these are taxable events. Please make sure that you're withholding tax if you can, or setting aside money to pay those taxes for your 2020 tax return. The worst thing is when people have to do something that they don't really want to, but then when they see me a year later and they see what the tax implications of that are, I don't like people crying at my desk. So please, please withhold taxes or, or make plans for that uh, for next year's tax return. Very good. Um, and then last on my list here is scams. There are all, already scams. I have already seen pictures of bogus checks out there. No checks have been released, I promise you. If you get uh, a call from the IRS, it's not the IRS. They're not going to call you. They will not email you. They will not text you. If you receive any of that, these are all phishing schemes trying to get your direct deposit and other information. Do not give them that disinformation. Um, something to keep an eye out for on any of these communications will be how they're wording it. If they call it a stimulus check or a stimulus payment, that is not correct. The IRS is only referring to this as an economic impact payment. So make sure that you know that's what you're saying because that is the official term. Um, if anybody offers to help you get faster payments for a fee, um, or you have to give them your personal information in order to do that. Don't do it. This is people trying to get your information. Um, if you get a bogus check that might be less than the amount you're expecting and says you need to call this number to reconcile it, that's also a scam. So make sure that if it seems odd to you, check with a professional. You can call our offices. Um, we are going to be open um, throughout, obviously, April 15th. We'll be on our seasonal hours, but the phones are always answered. So we'd love to help you any way we can. If it seems suspicious, it probably is. All right. What else do we have, Miss Amanda? No new questions right now. All right, guys. So I'm welcome for any questions. Oh, I see one popping oh, up here. Yep. Uh, the SBA loan is getting a lot of attention right now. You can qualify for the grant up to $10,000. 
Um, any recommendations on applying for that or if it's too good to be true? Um, that's a great question. I, you know, I'm not a lender, so that's not really something I can speak a lot to other than I've done um, a little bit of research on it myself. They only released the, the loan application information to banks last night, late last night. So a lot of banks are still sorting through the 31 pages um, of information, the guidance. Um, I will say if it's something that you need to get your business through right now, look into it. Talk to your local lenders. We've got a lot through the chamber who will be happy to answer the questions um, that you have based on the information they have. A lot of this information is still developing. And with everything I've even talked about today, we've had major changes on several of these points, even this week. So a lot of it's a fluid situation. Uh, we're trying to help people the best we can. So just make sure that you know, you're keeping up with it because it could change um, as more things develop. Other questions? Um, no, so just to double check, the, there's an extension for the spring taxes, right? But there's also the fall date, and right now there's no change to the fall date, right? Correct. So if you file an extension um, by July 15th, you'd only have until October 15th to file, and that's normal. All right, anybody have any other questions for Sam? All right, well, if you do, I'm sure you'll think of things along the way. Um, we are, Both of our offices are open. We'd love to help you any way we can. Um, we have one office in Carolina Forest. That's in the Kroger Shopping Center. So if you need a couple extra things at Kroger, you can stop by and talk to us too. Um, we're open from 9 to 5 through the week and 11 to 5 on Saturday. Um, and also in Surfside Beach. So that's at the Food Line Shopping Center on uh, corner of Bypass and Glens Bay Road. Um, they're also open uh, 9 to 5 through the week and 11 to 5 on Saturday. So we're open uh, six days a week through April 15th. And then um, we will be on our seasonal hours um, ramping back up for that July 15th deadline. But we always forward phones. And, you know, my goal is to answer questions best we can. Um, as well, I believe my email address is listed on the Chamber's website. So you're welcome to email with any questions you have as well. All right. Um, so also the Facebook live stream locked up, um, but I did record this and I'll post it that way. If we get any questions, we'll send those. Um, but if you guys have more questions um, as you're thinking about this, go ahead and post those on Facebook um, and we can get those over to Sam and try to answer. Oh, them. I think we've got one more. Oh, that was thanks. Yep. Absolutely. Glad to help. All right. Last chance to ask a question. All right, I think we're good, Sam. Thank you so much for hosting this. And Sam, also really quick, um, I think I saw you guys are doing like a curbside drop off too. Yes, we'll do it anyway. We have a couple of different options. They can drop off. Um, we'll take it out to the car for them. They just have to call when they get here. Uh, we have virtual um, preparation. They don't even have to come in if they have the ability to scan and upload documents. We have a secure file server. They can do that. Um, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for people without exposing themselves unnecessarily. All right, that's awesome. So kudos to you guys for thinking ahead and, and trying to maintain social distancing, even though this is a busy time for you. So that's, that's really cool. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you in the uh, webinars next week. Make sure you go to MyrtleBeachAreaChamber.com. We've got um, lots of webinars, some on coping with anxiety and self-care next week coming up. I think you guys will find those really useful, and we'll see you in the next one. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Bye.